Lauren Harris and other group of seven members are considered to be the first Canadian artist to paint the wild north shore of Lake Superior. That was in the 1920s. But a woman beat them to it. Edith Grace Coombs was painting there by 1913, when she was living in Fort William, now part of Thunder Bay. None of these early works have survived, a not uncommon occurrence. Coombs was born in Hamilton in 1890. She moved with her parents to St. Catharines, then to Gananoque, and after that to Fort William. Coombs taught at the Ontario College of Art in Toronto for more than 30 years. She was a highly prolific artist, exhibiting in Canada, the United States, Britain and France. Her repertoire included landscape, flowers, still life and the occasional portrait. For example, she portrayed her husband, James Sharp Lawson, with her dog Sandy at their summer place at Amic Lake in Ontario's Paris Sound District. The area was known for its great variety of wild flowers. The Art Gallery of Hamilton owns more than 40 of her works. One of them is Jack Ladderhouse, a small oil from about 1933. Coombs paints men at work at a sawmill in a loosely representational style that emphasises colour and shape. A slightly curved area comprising pale, broad and textured brush strokes fills the bottom of the painting. This appears to be a shore where two children sit with their backs to us. Combs models their bodies with small strokes running in many directions. Behind them, the prow of a boat has been reduced to a long triangle and a trapezium. The top half of the painting contains prominent verticals that direct the eye upward to three men on the right. They use poles to help logs move up the jack ladder, a slope trough, from the water to the sawmill. One of the men assumes a striking, space-taking pose with emphatic diagonals formed by his legs and two poles. The same kind of decisive brush strokes and brilliant colouring characterise Sawmill Yard near Nepfli, another view of the same location. In this version, three boats dominate. Logs float in the water, especially in the upper left. The subject of men at work is unusual for Coombs, but the style, featuring strong shapes and arbitrary colours, can be found in earlier landscapes, such as Desert near Salt Lake City, dated 1924. Coombs brings a land below the mountain to life through dynamic painterly shapes, each one showing the marks and movements of the brush. Coombs also liked to paint storms, the kind that revealed nature's more sublime and dramatic character. She executed in the path of the storm northern Ontario in 1926 in a style that is more lifelike than the preceding painting. She ups the drama by encouraging us to enter the painting on the left foreground. But as we settle in, we realise our footing is unsteady on the slippery and bumpy rock surface and a mighty tangle of uprooted trees, branches and roots blocks our path. Big diagonal strokes above the water and distant hills evoke a threatening sky. Green Wind, first exhibited in 1931, also explores nature's dramatic side. A leaning birch takes centre stage, its pose making the invisible wind visible. Lauren Pierce, the author of a biography of Coombs published in 1949, says some people thought of Coombs as a flower painter. Indeed, her watercolours in particular celebrate wildflowers. Red trilliums, for example, depicts a wildflower native to eastern North America. Others, however, said her landscapes were her best. One critic commended their masculine strength and turbulence. That's a traditional form of praise reserved for the woman artist, deemed to be exceptionally talented for a woman. Given the loosely representational style of some of her landscapes, the question arises whether Coombs ever explored abstraction. The answer is yes. In Music Patterns, a series of paintings, Coombs let sinuous and geometric forms 
express her response to a particular piece of music. In Deep River, for instance, ovals, spirals, and wave-like lines were inspired by a song recorded by Marian Anderson, an American contralto and one of the 20th century's greatest singers. Coombs died in St. Catharines in 1986. She once said, There is no virtue in novelty, but everything in being newborn every day. This is a most fitting thought for someone who devoted her life to making art. <laughs>